everyone, Ryan Kennedy here coming back at you with part two of my episode on dietary fats, which fats to consume and the healthy fats and the health benefits and a lot of the misconceptions I covered during the last episode. Now this episode is gonna be kind of going on the other end of the spectrum. Part two in this today's episode, I'm really diving deep into the harmful fats you should avoid, the toxic fats that no one should eat and why people were misled to believe these were healthy. So when, most pe- when you ask most people, you say, hey, what's the worst thing you can eat? You know, what's the most unhealthy food you can consume? The majority will answer sugar. But if you ask me, eating the wrong types of unhealthy fats are even worse for your body than pure sugar. Let's kind of start at the beginning and look at why some of these man-made, processed, industrial vegetable oils that cause so much damage to our bodies became so commonly consumed by Americans and why you'll find them in virtually all processed foods. So historically, humans never ate anything remotely close to the toxic vegetable oils we have today. You know, they ate and cooked with naturally occurring fats, things like butter, lard, beef tallow, coconut oil, palm fruit oil, things that we could actually get from the from nature. And so what ended up happening is As usual, you know, these big food conglomerates and these huge companies came in, these corporations that saw an opportunity to make a profit. So they started producing these really inflammatory, really harmful oils and cottonseed oil. Cottonseed oil is one of the first vegetable oils on the scene. It's not as common today as it used to be, but it's still in our food supply even today. And cottonseed oil was a byproduct from the cotton industry. And it was mainly used as a lubricant for factory equipment. Like, yeah, let's, that's a good idea. Let's start feeding people a lubricant for factory equipment. Makes perfect sense, right? No, it doesn't make any sense. So creating these vegetable oils that I'm diving into today involves using this big hydraulic press and this huge equipment to squeeze out the oil. And what comes out, folks, is not pretty. The oil comes out as this rancid, foul-smelling gray liquid. And then the processing occurs where the oil is deodorized to eliminate the bad odors. It's winterized to make the oil more stable. It's bleached to remove the gray color. And then it's enhanced with different artificial and synthetic ingredients. So Procter & Gamble was first to produce these industrial vegetable oils, which I have nothing but terrible things to say about that company. And they sold these processed oils initially as soap products. Uh, Then they observed that this product they were making for soap looked kind of similar to lard. It was white, it was thick. So they sold it as edible fat and they called it Crisco. Most of you listening to this probably recognize the name Crisco. And this was the introduction of vegetable oils into the American food supply. And I gotta say, Procter & Gamble did an amazing job of advertising Crisco. They, They effectively replaced butter and lard in most American homes. After Crisco came margarine, which is also made of these vegetable oils. And it followed the successful marketing campaign of Crisco into our food supply, which is just one of the worst things to ever happen to the entire food system in our world. Shortly after that, a guy named Ansel Keys came out with his diet heart hypothesis, where he cherry picked a bunch of research to show that saturated fat causes heart disease and these polyunsaturated fats, these unstable vegetable oils were much healthier, which is not true at all. And this this absurd claim this an inaccurate claim is really what paved the way for these toxic vegetable oils to take main stage and push the healthy fats that I discussed in part one of this episode, things like butter, lard, coconut oil, push them off the menu. And what really helped Procter and Gamble convince Americans that Crisco was a health food was they paid the American Heart Association a lot of money to expand their organization and to start promoting these vegetable based oils as heart healthy. When they first started this, the American Heart Association was a tiny, tiny association. They had like one office, not a lot of marketing budget, not a lot of awareness in the public. And Procter and Gamble came in and said, all right, we're gonna fund this company, this this quote unquote nonprofit, which is questionable right off the bat because they're obviously receiving a lot of compensation from these food conglomerates. And they said, we're gonna expand their association. It's gonna be nationwide. It's gonna be the go-to governing agency for people for health advice, which is just not, not the case. It's, it's terrible health advice. So the best book I've ever read on fats and oils kind of outlining this whole history. If you want to dive deeper into this, what I'm kind of, this story I'm, I'm outlining is called The Big Fat Surprise 
written by an author and investigative journalist, Nina Teichold, who explains this topic in great detail. So what exactly are vegetable oils? And let me break this down. Common vegetable oils include things like corn oil, soybean oil, canola oil, uh, which is actually uh, comes from the rape seed plant. Uh, not a terrible name for it, considering how freaking destructive it is to your health. Uh, safflower oil, cottonseed oil, and the term vegetable oil is very misleading for these oils because people associate vegetables with health, but it's not like they're pressing these oils from like Brussels sprouts or broccoli. These oils are really coming from seeds and beans. And the product's label, vegetable oil, is the king of unhealthy oils since it's a combination of all these cheap toxic oils like cottonseed, canola, soybean, corn, etc. to create the ultimate garbage oil. So a few words on cottonseed oil. While all vegetable oils should be avoided, cottonseed oil may be the worst of them all because of the chemical pesticide residue. Since cotton is not considered an edible, edible food crop, I mean, it's used for you know, a lot of uh, household goods, it's not usually consumed, you know, it's cotton. Uh, growers are legally allowed to use chemicals, you know, these pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, and the rest that are so toxic, they're not even allowed to be used on edible food crops. And this is absurd because it's well known that these cotton seeds are going to go on to be pressed as oils and used in all sorts of processed food, especially found in restaurant food. So, it just drives me nuts to, to see this stuff going on because once you start to understand it, you start to realize that you have to look out for your own health. Your health is really in your hands because these agencies, these conglomerates and companies, they're not out there to improve the health of the public. They're out there to make money. And so they're unfortunately doing a lot of unethical things uh, in the pursuit of higher profit margins. So let's dive into some of the negative effects of consuming these said vegetable oils. They can have serious, serious repercussions to your health, short and long term. You know, a lot of research has demonstrated they can increase your risk for heart disease, cancer, and other chronic illnesses. And these partially hydrogenated vegetable oils uh, have even been shown to cause calcification in the arteries. They lead to chronic inflammation at the cellular level, both of which can lead to a whole slew of negative outcomes. And so these vegetable oils contain trans fats, even the ones that are not hydrogenated, although hydrogenated can contain even higher levels of trans fats. And these trans fats have been shown to increase your chances of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, obesity. I mean, they really just disrupt our metabolic health and our health as, as a whole. And these vegetable oils are also polyunsaturated fats that are really high in omega-6. And remember, like I talked about in part one, go back and listen to part one if you haven't already, Americans in general consume far too many of these omega-6 fats as it is and not nearly enough of the omega-3 fats. And the key is really optimizing that omega-3 and omega-6 uh, fatty acid ratio. That balance is what we're aiming for. So multiple studies have demonstrated this imbalance and omega-6 to 3 uh, can really cause a lot of inflammation and potential problems. And, and so that's not bad enough. Most of these vegetable oils are genetically modified and they're ridden with all these chemical pesticide residue. So that's just going to be a no-brainer to avoid them for that reason among all the other reasons I'm outlining. And when they're exposed to high heat, these vegetable oils become exponentially worse because they're highly unstable. So when they're used for cooking, they create these oxidation byproducts, which are known carcinogens, carcinogens meaning cancer-causing compounds, uh, such as aldehydes. And when, the, when food is fried in these vegetable oils, hundreds of toxic oxidation byproducts are created. And since restaurants started using these vegetable oils, they've had a difficult time even cleaning their equipment and cooking areas because these oils create this gooey, sticky mess that gets on the walls, clogs up the drains, it causes these horrible stains on, their, on the clothes of the employees. And so the scientists had to create a, a super strong chemical cleaner in order to get all this gooey vegetable oil mess off of these restaurant establishments, walls, and cooking equipment. And these oils were even so unstable. I read this in uh, Nina Teichold's book. They're so unstable that when the workers would load dirty uniforms into the back of these trucks, the uniforms would spontaneously combust. They would even explode in the freaking dryer. This is not something you want to be putting into your body. And yet millions and millions of people are unknowingly putting tons of this garbage into their bodies every single day. So when you eat these harmful fats and oils, they really cause 
massive inflammation and serious metabolic issues because your body actually turns them into your cell membranes. I talked about in part one, how fats comprise your cell membrane because they're primarily fat. And this is gonna alter the physical properties of the cell membrane. It's gonna damage its ability to eliminate toxins. It's gonna, it's gonna really cripple its ability to perform just proper cell signaling. And your metabolism depends on proper cell signaling. So when you have this chronic inflammation at the cellular level, due to eating these harmful, rancid, terrible fats, your metabolism slows down, insulin resistance goes up, and that's gonna result in a lot more fat storage, a much harder time losing weight, and a much greater chance of chronic disease. So this is a big problem, a big, big problem in a lot of folks' diets. And when these cell membranes are inflamed, the cell essentially turns into a garbage dump because the toxins can't be eliminated and become trapped inside the cell. And this toxic burden often leads to a big decrease in your quality of life. You start feeling super lousy and oftentimes chronic illness comes from, you know, as a result of that. So it's really, really terrible. And unfortunately, these harmful vegetable oils are found in most places. Uh, the vast majority, almost all processed food contains soybean oil or one of these other various vegetable oils like canola oil, it should absolutely be avoided. One question I get is, you know, the Whole Foods bar. So Whole Foods being, you know, big grocery chain, they have a bar, hot food bar, where they make a lot of pre-made food. People think it's healthy because it's at Whole Foods, but they use non-GMO canola oil. People are like, hey, Ryan, it's non-GMO. What do you think of this? I'm like, it's, it's a lie. You can't have non-GMO canola oil because Canola oil comes from the rapeseed plant, which is genetically modified. So inherently, every single ounce of canola oil is GMO. How these companies can label it as non-GMO is beyond me. I can't explain that, it makes zero sense because all canola oil is GMO. Even if it wasn't, you should not be consuming these fats and anything cooked in these fats is something you should run the, the other direction, like run away from that because it's gonna be tr just terribly, terribly damaging to your health. And what's unfortunate is virtually every restaurant serves fried food and a lot of the other foods using these vegetable oils because they're so cheap. They're so cheap and restaurants love to use them in place of things like butter or ghee or coconut oil or what have you because they save so much money. You know, they use a lot of quantity and it'd be extraordinarily expensive compared to vegetable oils for them to use a healthy fat. So unless the restaurant is unique and focuses on high quality ingredients, most restaurants are gonna be using the cheapest possible ingredients in their food. You gotta understand, a restaurant is a business. They're looking to make a profit. They're looking to keep the lights on and, and maintain you know, some, some net profit, some net revenue. I mean, I get it. So they're not looking, they're not health restaurants. They're not out there to improve the health of the public. They're out there to serve food and make money. While there are a couple exceptions, no doubt about it, there are some great restaurants out there. I know I've been to a few. Uh, most of them, the vast majority, are gonna be using these. So anytime I eat out, I always request my food is cooked in butter. Almost every restaurant has butter back there. You know, I just say like, let, I let the staff know. I say, hey, listen, vegetable oils are seriously damaging to my body. Sometimes I'll even use the word allergy. So when you say the word allergy at a restaurant, they take your request very seriously. But I'll just tell them this is gonna really wreck me. So I need to avoid them entirely. Can you just cook my food in butter? And they always say yes. You know, their job is to make the customer happy. So it's just about asking for what you want and the odds are you're gonna be able to avoid these at restaurants. So key takeaway here, folks, in part two of this episode is that these vegetable oils are highly processed, rancid, inflammatory fats. They're one of the worst things you could put into your body and they should absolutely be avoided at all costs because once consumed, these fats will actually comprise your cell membranes, They'll cause chronic inflammation at the cellular level and ultimately lead to cellular dysfunction, which is at the root cause of so many issues people deal with. So aim for only consuming healthy fats that are covered in depth in part one of this episode. So appreciate you tuning in. I hope you learned something. I'm not sharing this information to scare you, but rather to empower you to make smart choices in your nutrition, in your day-to-day -day lifestyle so that you can really optimize your health and your quality of life. Thanks for listening in, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you found it helpful, please share it along to anyone else you believe it can serve. You can find the show notes and resources we discussed at ryankennedyshow.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave a review for the show. Your feedback helps to support me on my mission to positively impact as many people as possible with this information. Much love, everyone.